As I carve out the front of the box, I imagine how the 9th century Oseberg Viking ship must have appeared at the time it was built. A millennium later, Viking expeditions capture the imagination like few legends do. Although idealized in romantic art, Vikings were without a doubt skilled seafarers and explorers. The Oseberg ship is one surviving example of advanced craftsmanship and engineering that, when viewed along with the sagas and tales, brings the stories to life. Earlier this year, I began building a Viking chest. The previous two parts that I've made detail the progress that was made at that time, but the chest still lacks a few details. The first is a finished, cohesive design on the face of the chest. I want the box to say very clearly and plainly that it is a Viking chest. So when we look at different designs that we could use, the Oseberg ship is the first thing that came to my mind. The gripping beast motif seen on the bow of the Oseberg ship is iconic and perhaps the most recognizable form of Viking artwork styles. The arms, legs, and hands of the elongated animal figures are intertwined in a loose knot-like formation. What I can show you are some of the techniques that I use in carving out the design. I'm by no means an expert. My experience in carving wood is mostly limited to shaping the inner portions of the cores for my scabbards and I've chosen soft wood, poplar, just like the scabbard cores. While the Oseberg ship is mainly of oak, I imagine that oak and other hardwood would require considerably greater skill and perhaps different tools as well. If I was teaching a class on carving, I would probably start with two rules. The first rule is never cut across the grain, and the second rule is try not to ever sand across the grain. You'll notice that the wood flows in a direction, all the lines go in that direction, and if possible you want to cut in that direction and sand in that direction as well. So get comfortable cutting into the wood, carving out the shapes, uh, try to go in the direction of the grain, and then the next thing I would say is forget the first two rules, just be very careful whenever you're cutting against the grain, or if you're sanding against the grain, realize that you'll probably have to re-sand in the direction of the grain at a later time. The chisels I'm using are the same ones that I used on the scabbard builds. They're hobby chisels, or gouges, which are intended for fine work and don't require a hammer, unlike more robust chisels. There are about five general shapes, and usually they come in different sizes in the pack that you get. The scoop shape, that was used almost exclusively on the scabbards. The V shape, it's great for outlining and drawing profiles. Unless it's very sharp, it won't want to cut across the grain. The flat edge, it's perfect for creating a flat surface, evening out ridges that you don't want. The pointy one, I use this one for scraping mostly. It's useful for deepening an existing line or cleaning up hard to get to angles. And finally, the X-Acto knife shape. And this one's probably the most versatile. It's sort of an all-purpose blade. It can pretty much do all of the other jobs. So at this point, we're gonna try to carve the scales uh, into the different beasts. And if we look at the Oseberg ship again, we can see there are various designs. And we'll try to go with the two that look like they're the easiest and I've noticed that my wood has dried out a bit so it's really not a good thing it's it's been in my house for uh, several months and uh, unfortunately it's just been drying out the whole time um, the reason it's not a good thing is it starts to chip away it's harder to accurately carve uh, anything at that point so we'll try to get this done as quickly as possible so that um, you know we can stop that drying process and get a, a top coat or something like that on it so we'll put these shapes in. I'm going to first draw them with a pencil and then cut them out. After the scales and the beast are added, the next thing we want to do is just you know, add some color. I'm going to use oil paints. I've got four different colors here. Primarily, I'm going to use um, burnt sienna. I also have burnt umber, so I'll probably use those the most. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of lamp black in the darkest places and then also some Van Dyke Brown. And uh, these are all oil colors, so you know these are linseed-based oil paints. And I'm gonna add it as thick as possible with a brush, trying to get all the little cracks. We can always go back into it later and uh, you know 
touch up any spots that were missed. But once that's all thick and uh, pretty much the whole thing is covered, we're going to take some rags and remove it. So we're removing the, the topmost layers. This will help out with the depth um, because the, the areas that are furthest away will remove the least amount. It's really up to you how much you would want to remove. Um, it's really going to be sort of an artistic decision at that point. The last thing would be the hinges, and we're not going to spend too much time thinking about those. And needless to say, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to do the hinges right, but I didn't want to delay the upload any further. So I'll be sure to uh, post some results, sort of some um, final looks on Patreon. If you haven't noticed from my voice, I've been ill recently, and once again, I apologize for the lack of uploads. Um, but it's a new year, so happy new year. Uh, another opportunity for me to deliver what my audience wants and the feedback that I've gotten is more armor. So that's where much of my attention will be focused this new year. And so stay tuned for that. So thanks all of you for watching today and talk to you soon.